Welcome everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another Back to Basics episode. Today we're going to be giving you some tips on how to better stand up and climb some technical rocky terrain. The first feature and technique we're going to show you is the one I think is most exciting and important to really unlocking confidence and ability in climbing rough terrain. And I guess for lack of a better word, I'm going to try to call that disconnecting your upper body from your lower body. And what I mean by that is when you sit down and pedal, your legs are doing this, right? You're a machine and you are stiff, you're in a motion and that's it. The upper body needs to be fluid, strong, but, but able to move and manipulate up, down, side to side. And that's where we're going to talk about that disconnect. What you're going to have to do is be able to get up on the bike in a standing position, right? So you're going to have to have a, a strong yet flexible core that's going to allow you to do this on the bike, but also maintain a smooth and consistent pedaling force. That way you're not losing traction, you're not spinning tire. Um, you've got just a steady circular delivery of power in an upper body that is able to just worm itself up uneven and rocky or rooty terrain. So uh, I'll try to show you guys what that looks like on flat ground and see if that helps kind of give you guys a picture of what needs to happen as you encounter uneven terrain. All right, so good solid power, right? My body is here, but now I'm starting to do these movements while I'm pedaling. So the key is to just keep a consistent cadence and power while your upper body is doing that. And I know it looks goofy, but you may want to practice that flat ground or even on a surface, like on a street where you can be in a hard gear, putting down power and just do this with your upper body. And just doing that movement and that motion will start to teach your brain how to keep the legs stiff and strong, putting power down while your upper body can conform to the terrain. Now this rock wall is going to be a prime example of where that becomes important on the trail. Strong legs, loose upper body, power. While this isn't a crazy steep or overly gnarly rock garden, I think this is a good starting point for people to practice on who maybe would take the easy line way around the outside. The, the reasons that these apply are there's lots of loose rock and marble, so having that stable, predictable power delivery will help avoid loss of traction. There's lots of undulations and holes that require the front tire to either be light and smooth or a little bit of strength to pull up when needed so you're not banging into stuff. And similarly, being able to move side to side, steering, any of that stuff is going to be harder when you're not tense, right? If you're relaxed and loose, you know, you're you're working from a stable core, but your shoulders and upper back and hands are able to just sort of let that bike go where it needs to go to find its way up with the least amount of impact and resistance possible. I think that's going to be a really big key to unlocking confidence and the ability to start cresting and getting over roots or rocks that have hung you up in the past. Oh my gosh. So this first section of trail we're going to show you is a, a pretty good example of where you, the sit and spin technique just isn't going to cut it. Full seat height, sitting down and spinning away, it's just not going to be the recipe for success. So uh, when it comes to standing up, getting out of the saddle to climb technical terrain, I would say you want to drop the saddle, I would, I would say at least 25% down. Sometimes, depending on how steep or how techy, you might want to go 50% or even a little more. But I think this is going to be a pretty good 50 to 75% saddle drop. Essentially, what you're going to do here, you're going to come up this little bit. You've got a few pedal strokes to get that seat post height settled, your gear selected, take a few deep breaths, get the heart rate down, and then you're going to prep for what's coming. And what is next is a little bit of a notch and a little step. It's nothing too crazy, but you're, you're in deep. You're on a climb, you're tired, it's loose, you've got a turn, and next up you've got another 
semi-powerful rock feature. So the, the game here is to keep momentum up and conserve energy, right? And getting off the bike and restarting are big energy sucks. So you wanna keep going. As you come out here, you can see there's big step rocks. Right in the middle is a smooth channel. Both tires probably aren't gonna make it through that channel because of the radius of the turn. So what I do is try to find the smoothest line for the front tire, which is gonna be this outside edge of the rock. And then that way, as you turn, your rear tire is gonna be going right into that notch, right? These, the path of least resistance is what climbing efficiently is all about. So right here, you're gonna bring that front tire over the outside of the rock, it's nice and smooth line. Back tire fits right into that notch. This is gonna be your next power pedal stroke, right? You're gonna to wanna to get one or two good strokes to get that back tire up. And then once you're here, you're in the clear, sit down, extend that seat post maybe for a second or two, then you're going to be presented with two options. One is going to lure you to what looks like the easy line on the right. I'm gonna suggest you go to the left. So again, anywhere you can, take those moments, get your breath, your heart rate settled, get ready for the next move. So uh, let's ride this out and show you what it looks like stringing it all together. All right, so I've just dropped my seat. I'm in my gear, front tire out here, back tire through the middle, sit, compose, and get ready for the next move. After rounding the corner, you'll get yourself out here on the outside to line up for the trail, get those couple of pedal strokes and breaths to compose yourself. Again, this is why gear selection is important. You wanna be in a harder gear because once you get to about here, you're gonna to need to give a good solid pedal stroke and a little bit of a push into a pull move. So you're gonna use that forks rebound to help you get up here and time that with a good hard pedal stroke. So as that front wheel comes up, you're pushing the power down to help unweight it to get it up over here. And then you're gonna keep going and give another strong power pedal stroke to get yourself up the back end. Now, if you're just spinning a really high cadence, you're gonna be hitting way more frequently because you're pedaling twice as many times just to get that same amount of drive. So having a little bit harder of a gear will give you more momentum per pedal stroke. So a couple of months back, we made a video about how to descend better in technical rock gardens. And in that video, we said sometimes what looks like the easiest path isn't always the best. Um, and I think this is another prime example uh, to riders who are approaching this section, this might look like the way they want to go because it looks smoother, it looks less intimidating, they don't see the big rock stacked. However, judging by all of the pedal strikes that are on both sides in those rocks, you've got kind of a ditch that you're riding in. I would say more people are not making this section than this. And while this is going to lure you in, especially when you're feeling tired and maybe aren't full of confidence that you can climb up this rock. I would urge you guys to try to start looking at and trying these sections, because I think in the long run, it's gonna make you more successful and get you climbing better. First up, we're gonna start on the right line. All right. So, definitely rideable. It is smooth. There's just a little bit more of like finessing and pedal timing. And again, you gotta be in a hard gear because if you're just spinning, you're gonna hit rocks on both sides. So uh, now we'll go over and do the other line. So what I like about the left line is you really only have one thing to worry about and that's just that one bump. Whereas the line on the right, you've got four things to think about and multiple steps that are gonna rob your momentum each time while having to worry about pedal strikes. So we selected this feature because in and of itself, if there was a nice flat approach, this would be a, a great place to start practicing those tips on a little bit of a steeper scale. This has a little bit of an added element because it has a really steep downhill to a very short, I'd say one, not even a bike length flat transition between a downhill to an uphill. And I think that might put some, some people off who may feel like oh, I'm gonna be coming down something steep and not gonna have myself composed. And 
essentially once you get here into this position, you're gonna be employing those same tips that we just went over on some of the mellower stuff, but you'll have a little bit of momentum at your side. Now the way I'm gonna ride this and explain this isn't just by using brute force and speed to get up it, which absolutely can be done, but that's not what we're trying to work on today. If you're choosing to not use speed as your side to kind of hit this and bump up and kind of air over most of the obstacles, I would say slow down to a pretty manageable speed. That way you can get in here, have a little bit of composure. And what I would do is when you get into that compression, almost kind of pretend like you're gonna to try to manual or, or wheelie off of a curb or something, give a little bit of pop off the fork as you're pushing your feet and your hips down and back throw your feet forward just to get that front wheel up over this first bump. Once you do that, you're not having all that body weight, you know, shifting forward from that first initial impact. It will allow the momentum of the bike to get you a little bit closer to here. And once you're there, your front tire is over the majority of the obstacles. And that's what you want to think about. Every block or step is trying to rob your momentum and your energy and shift your body weight forward. So, the farther you can get at least one of those wheels over every one of those roadblocks, the better chance you've got. So then once you get here, obviously you're gonna need to put some power down and that's where having a nice stable base that's not being shifted around, disconnecting that upper body and shoulders from the legs and hips will allow you to stay smooth and fluid up here to do what you need to do. And then let you put in some power to just nicely crawl up those rocks on the way out if you come into this with an attack mentality of like, I have the strength, I've got the power, I can do this, just put the pedals down and don't stop pedaling. Even if you slow down, don't stop pedaling, right? You, you guys can balance yourself so you can stay upright on the bike. So even if you go to a creeping speed, keep pedaling, you'll get over that last hump and away you go. So we're gonna roll in very slow, push down on the fork, compress up and as you can see, I almost made it up without even doing a solid pedal and I just started at the top. But just that little compression on the front end to the lift up was a huge, huge help in getting me over that. All right, folks, so there you go. Hopefully some of these tips and techniques help you guys, give you the confidence and the know-how in the back of that mind next time you see a little rock garden or something that you might have just dismissed or thought, I don't have the ability to do this. I guarantee you do. Just work on disconnecting that upper body from the hips and the pedaling motion and make sure you keep that, that weight nice, stable and balanced up over the bars and let those legs put in the work. You'll be able to start tackling rock climbs in no time.